Good evening, everyone. Uh, today uh, we are uh, talking about uh, mesenteric ischemia, mesenteric vascular disease. Uh, we have uh, many topics about uh, mesenteric vascular disease, acute mesenteric ischemia, chronic mesenteric ischemia, mesenteric venous thrombosis, mesenteric arterial dissection, and the last topic is splanchnic aneurysm. In the first, uh, we have start about uh, the anatomy for the mesenteric vascular disease. Uh, Celiac trunk uh, started uh, at the upper border of L1 and they give branches of uh, splenic artery and uh, left gastric artery and common hepatic artery which give uh, later on hepatic proper right and left hepatic artery and uh, we have also gastroepileptic artery and uh, mechanical duodenal artery uh, to be noted that uh, superior mechanical duodenal artery make an osmosis with inferior mechanical duodenal artery from the superior mesenteric artery so the celiac trunk has a left gastric artery prevention, splenic artery prevention, common hepatic artery, give them hepatic proper right left hepatic artery, and the superior mechanical duodenal and the right gastroepileptic. About the superior mesenteric artery, uh, which is uh, started at lower border of L1 and gave branch of uh, middle colic artery. We have also inferior mechanical duodenal artery which give anastomosis with the uh, celiac trunk, middle colic artery, right colic artery, and then ileocecal artery. And the last one are regional branches. Inferior mesenteric artery started at the lower border of the L3 and they give branches of um, uh, left colic artery, sigmoidal artery, and the superior rectal artery. So, what about the embryology? Uh, primitive dorsal aorta give rise to abdominal aorta, while primitive ventral aorta give rise to ventral segment arteries, which disappear around the fourth week of the gestation. Resistance of the tenth branch gives celiac artery, thirteen branch gives superior mesenteric artery, and twenty one branch give inferior mesenteric artery. We have normal anastomosis uh, and connection between mesenteric vessels at the following. Superior mesenteric artery in the form of inferior mechanical duodenal give anastomosis with the trunk and superior mechanical duodenal. Superior mesenteric artery with inferior mesenteric artery in the form of meandric artery arch rebellion. Superior mesenteric artery right mid collecum anastomosis with inferior mesenteric artery ascending left uh, colic artery in the form of inferior margin artery of the Inferior mesenteric artery, right and left superior rectal, and smooth with the internal iliac artery, middle and inferior rectal. This is the picture show the anastomosis, the normal anastomosis between mesenteric vascular. Uh, we have um, a connection between select trunk and superior mesenteric artery in the form of an um, arc of Bohler, which is normally after gestation severe, and the connection of an uh, bancaritical duodenal artery, superior and inferior bancaritical duodenal artery. The connection between superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery in the form of an arc of rivalin and arc of um, dormo. The connection between um, the inferior rectal art, uh, inferior mesenteric artery and the um, internal iliac artery in the form of um, superior rectal and the middle inferior rectal artery. So this is uh, a CT angiography uh, uh, in our patient clinic. Uh, CT angiography for um, the aorta and the um, visceral branches um, shown uh, stenotic lesion about tight stenosis 90% for the celiac trunk and uh, we have also mid segment um, of superior mesenteric artery occlusion and normal inferior mesenteric artery. In this view, we uh, will find um, we have tight stenosis of the celiac trunk um, occlusion mid segment uh, for the superior mesenteric artery and normal inferior mesenteric. And if we have the show about um, the video, it will be like the, this one. Celiac, superior mesenteric, left renal vein, renal artery, inferior mesenteric. Yeah, uh, true. And uh, this is true. We have in the folding, in the first celiac trunk, superior mesenteric. Left renal vein, two renal arteries, and the last one will be in pure mesenteric. Diagnostic duplex and ultrasonography. Effective non invasive diagnosis of both acute mesenteric ischemia and chronic mesenteric ischemia. Diagnose high grade stenosis of superior mesenteric artery and celiac trunk, but missing superior mesenteric artery and blossom that lodge beyond the proximal segment. 
In non occlusive mesentic ischemia, a diagnosed low flow situation and a dense stenosis which is associated in 40% of the cases. The intestinal wall may be evaluated for transmural hemorrhage, inflammation, and necrotic thickening. What about the chronic mesentic ischemia? We exceeded velocity in the superior mesentic artery more than 275 cm per second, uh, predict for 70% or more in angiopathic stenosis. While big third velocity of more than 200 cm per second in select trunk, it denoted and predicts 70 percent stenosis in the angiographic stenosis. The end stage volume in subunicidic artery more than 45 cm per second or in select trunk more than 55 cm per second predicted more than 50 percent of the stenosis. Duplexin has a good sensitivity and specificity for detecting lesion in the subunicidic artery and celiac artery where uh, 92% and 87% respectively. In the picture of the normal big cystic velocity for the celiac trunk, which is normally less than 200 cm per second, and subium is the less than 275 cm per second, and then if we have more than 200 and 275 cm per second respectively, it denotes and predicts of more than 70% of the stenosis. But we have limitations with the duplex ultrasound. The first respiratory variation, dependent on the skills of the operator, obesity, intraluminal bowel gas, and apparent anatomy. MRA, Magnetic Resonance Angiography. Uh, it emerged as a sensitive imaging modality for evaluation of the celiac and other visceral arteries for occlusive disease and chronic mesentic ischemia. Its rule for evaluating patients with acute mesentic ischemia is limited because MRA takes significantly longer, longer time to be performed than CT angiography. We have limitations, of course, in claustrophobia and morbid disease patient. MRA avoids the radiation exposure associated with CT angiography or contrast exposure, and it will be suitable for moderate chronic kidney disease and thin keratin up to 2.2 mg per deciliter. In this picture of MRA, we are showing that we have tight stenosis in the celiac trunk and occlusion for the superior mesentic artery. Conventional geography advantage. The gold standard for imaging for the celiac trunk and superior mesentic artery had the ability to limit contrast volume in patients with renal failure, the ability to perform interventions and geoplasty stenting and uh, ATC. It measured pressure gated also. This advantage and potential communication, including arterial dissection, embolization, thrombosis, and access site communication. In this picture, we are seeing a catheter from the femoral and then we are showing that we have occlusion in both the trunk, celiac trunk, and superior mesentic artery. So, what is the technique? Arterial access may be performed through either femoral or brachial arteries. For the celiac trunk and superior mesentic artery, brachial approach is often preferred. Femoral access requires second curved catheter, for example, SOS, Simmons, and Cobra 2. Multi data to CT angiography allow to evaluate anatomical characteristics like calcification, thrombus diameters and length. CT angiography protocol should be include the use of negative oral contrast agents, such as water and 550 ml given immediately before the scan to reduce its artifact and make small bowel enhancements. By basic CT angiography, which include arterial phase and delayed phase, CT angiography should be performed despite them and elevated serum creatinine due to the low risk of contrast induced necropathy and suspect the lethal condition. Of course, acute mesentic ischemia is a lethal condition, and uh, when you avoid it, to make CT angiography, because we have elevated serum creatinine, so the danger and risk of mortality, be sure that uh, more than contrast property, so you can wait the benefit versus hazards. This is a picture of a multi detector CT angiography, and we have found that with this angles in the tubular mesentic artery, and uh, in the axial cut also. Laboratory finding d diamond has been found to be the most consistent high sensitive early marker, but specificity was low, so it would be good negative for exclusion. Plasma intestinal and fatty acid binding globulin predicted them to be increased in acute intestinal ischemia and also ileal bile acid binding protein. In addition with acute superior mesentic artery exclusion, there is elevated troponin 1, elevated pancreatic amylase, lactic acid, and LDH. Acidosis, dehydration, and hemocostation and leukocytosis also, and the high anion gap are common laboratory findings. 
Endoscopy in the case of acute mesenteric ischemia, and it is a predictor for the uh, assessment viability of the intestinal group. Acute on top of chronic mesenteric ischemia with insidious clinical course may show sign of the ischemia in the duodenum and right colon on endoscopy. H. pylori testing is typically negative. Capsule endoscopy may be helpful to detect chronic ischemia lesion in the small bowel. Segmented ischemia can be missed. Acute mesenteric ischemia pathophysiology in the first one, mucosa has venous sloughing, increased capillary permeability and edema, some mucosal hemorrhage and transmural necrosis. Acute thrombotic occlusion thrombosis occur at area of severe atherosclerotic narrowing, most often at the origin of the severe mesenteric artery from the aorta. History of the other atherosclerotic manifestations such as coronary, cerebrovascular, or peripheral arterial occlusion disease are common. Dehydration, low cardiac output, and hypercoagulable state are major contribution factors to thrombosis. In case of thrombotic occlusion at the origin of the superior mesenteric artery, ischemia usually develops from the proximal duodenum to the mid transverse colon. This is the picture of the superior mesenteric artery occlusion. Sagittal multiplanar reformatum acute thrombotic occlusion of the proximal superior mesenteric artery. And we find that um, thrombosis usually started from the ostium of the artery. And this is the axial cotton. And this is a picture of uh, uh, colon uh, nematocism and ascites. Acute embolic occlusion sources of the embolus mesenteric emboli usually originate from the heart, AF, bubble disease, dilated left atrium, recent MI, and ventricular dilatation with neural thrombus. Our two arterial embolus aneurysm, iatrogenic embolization has been reported after cardiac catheterization, coronary arteriography, and autography. Emboli tend to lodge at the point of the normal anatomical narrowing distal to the origin of the major branch. Typically, the embolus lodge a few centimeters distal to the origin of the superior mesenteric artery, sparing the proximal jejunal branch and allow preservation of the proximal jejunum. In the picture, we have preservation of the proximal jejunum and transverse colon, being the embolus lodge a few centimeters beyond the ostium or the origin of the superior mesenteric artery. How the data CT angio show um, embolism of the superior mesenteric artery in this picture also and then in the axial cut. And uh, we find also uh, embolic manifestation for the kidney, uh, left renal infarction, and uh, left ventricular thrombosin present also in the CT angiography. We have three clinical phases of the acute embolic superior mesenteric artery occlusion. Phase one is a hyperperistaltic wave phase with severe abdominal pain and minimal abdominal sign and finding. We have forceful bowel embedding, vomiting and order and the presence of the source of the embolus in AF. Phase 2 is paralytic phase of the bowel with distended and silent abdomen. The pain intensely often decrease. Phase 3 is a peritonitis phase with continuous pain, peritonitis, and rapid general deterioration and acidosis. Non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia carry highest mortality rate due to multi-organ failure. Elderly patient in ICU with multi-organ failure presented with severe abdominal pain. It represents 20% of the acute mesenteric ischemia. Pathophysiology includes heart failure, peripheral hypoxemia, paradoxical sparanchic vasospasm, and reperfusion injury of the revascularization. Excessive sympathetic overactivity due to cardiogenic shock and hypovolemia also reported. Vasopressin and angiotensin are neurohormonal mediators. In orthography, show narrow origin of the superior mesenteric artery, diffuse attenuation and narrowing string of sausage, spasm of the mesenteric arcade, and impaired filling of the intramural vessel. In special, we have uh, diffuse attenuation of the vessels and branches, and alternating narrowing of the superior mesenteric artery, what is called the sausage shape. And this is a picture of uh, uh, interoptive angiography, and we have found the diffuse spasm of the RCR3 of the mesentery. And after we have an injection of intra RCR vasodilator substance, the spasm has been relieved. Management uh, all cases of the acute mesentery ischemia require fluid resuscitation, correct electrolyte imbalance, invasive monitoring blood pressure, urine at bottom, central venous pressure, broad spectrum antibiotic. In case of a non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia, critical case reporting 
Also, you can see that enter a serial bus directors. Careful monitoring of the blood pressure heart rate for rhythm. If hypertension has occurred, stop the pepper pre infusion. Acute mesodic ischemia, we have an open intervention, surgery, and pelectomy for case of acute embolic ischemia. Exposure is meant by laparotomy, exposure of the severe mesodic artery, and rhythm of transverse mesentery, and you might need a bold retraction of the pancreas. Use Fogarty 3 or 4 proximal and use them Fogarty 2 3 French distal. Intraarterial heparin may require also thrombosis infusion. Followed by condition angiography, anterior and lateral blast minus balloon angioplasty. We can discuss this intervention in the next slide. Uh, anterior exposure of the superior music artery in the first term, we have a beating, the omentum, and transverse colon. And small distance is wrapped in, and the most important bed retracted to the right. Horizontal incision is made in the peritoneum at the base of the transverse mesocolon. Careful dissection of the mesentery initially uncover the venous tributary of the superior mesentric vein and autonomic nerve fiber. You may also require to abort the retraction of the inferior border of the pancreas. We will find superior mesentric artery lying to the left of the superior mesentric vein. Exposure uh, of the more proximal segment, as we have said, them, is possible by careful mobilization of the inferior pancreatic portal. Then um, you will uh, uh, giving uh, intravenous heparin, clamping, transverse atriotomy, proximal uh, embryotomy using fogartine uh, 3 or 4 uh, size French, and distal by uh, fogartine number 2 or 3 French, intraarterial um, uh, heparin uh, or thrombolysis infusion. Condition angiography and posterior and lateral followed by uh, correction of lesion by balloon angioplasty may be required. Superior mesentric artery bypassy is the second option and is for acute thrombotic mesenteric ischemia or failed embryotomy. Exposure of the lateral part of the superior mesentric artery peritoneum is open lateral to the fourth part of the duodenum and down over the aorta toward the left or right common iliac artery. Retrocate the CK to right or left common iliac artery. It avoids all the clamping and provide good lie and prevent kinking. We can use graft of 8 or 10 mm diaphragm or BCP or using softness in case of sepsis and perforation. It's important to cover the graft or the window coverage to avoid them uh, uh, to avoid the uh, enteric fistula. This is the picture of retrocate and the inflow from the right common iliac artery using 8 or 10 mm diaphragm or BCP. Uh, you uh, might use the softness in case of the sepsis, and here we are avoiding cremic uh, for the aorta. Anti-gradin used when distant inflow is uh, unclampable. When you have uh, unca unclampable uh, iliac artery being a heavy disease or aneurysm, so you have to take uh, your um, inflow from the supraceliac or thoracic aorta. And in this case, uh, you are doing uh, aortic cremic, and then uh, you are passing uh, your uh, graft. Uh, uh, as a tunneling the true root of mesentery to target of your artery superior mesenteric artery and usually it's important to cover the graft with omitted clip. Assessment of the power viability after um, revascularization after treatment of reperfusion it's important to assess power viability uh, depending on the clinical uh, experience of normal color and the peristaltis bleeding for the surface denoted by the lobe also by using double assessment of the anti mesenteric border. Even after reperfusion and careful assessment, bowel viability cannot be determined with surgery at the time of the initial exploration, second look operation may be required. The decision to perform the second look surgery is made at the time of the initial operation. And the last option is an end atherectomy transpositioning of the artery. What about the endovascular management for the acute mesenteric ischemia? Percutaneous catheter thrombectomy, periodic mechanical thrombectomy, chemical thrombolysis, all are options followed by balloon angioplasty as endovascular management for acute mesenteric ischemia. Integrate the cutaneous recanalization using the precal axis or retrograde the cutaneous using femoral axis and uh, you have them uh, use a balloon uh, or stent in case of um, transistoric pressure more than 12 mm indicate um, intervention. Hybrid technique between open, it is a mixing between open and um, endovascular. Retrograde open mesenteric stent. Used in field anti or retrograde pair cutaneous refinalization or in case of dissection. Retrograde open mesenteric stent proms during emergent laboratory for acute mesenteric ischemia 
is a promising technique and attractive alternative. Tire pressure sneering guidewire at the overturn deployment or distance. Guidelines and take home messages acute mesotech ischemia. In patients with acute abdominal pain, D dimer measurement is recommended to exclude acute mesotech ischemia. Use of L lactate measurement is not recommended to diagnose them or rule out acute or closed mesotech ischemia. In patients with suspected acute mesotech ischemia, triphasic CT angiography within with 1 mm slicing or thinner should be used to detect a mistake arterial occlusion. In patients with suspected acute mistake ischemia and elevated creatinine value, CD angiography may be considered, accepting the risk of the contrast and use them renal failure to save the life. In patients with acute mistake arterial ischemia, open or endovascular revascularization should be considered before bowel surgery. In patients undergoing mistake revascularization, completion imaging with angiography, or transient time flow measurement should be considered. In patients who are undergoing laparotomy for acute mesotech ischemia, clinical judgment should be considered as the preferred method for assistant bowel viability. Patients requiring bowel resection because of intestinal infarction should be treated with antibiotics. In patients undergoing acute intestinal revascularization, second look laparotomy and damage control surgery should be considered. In patients with acute thrombotic superior mystic artery occlusion, endovascular therapy should be considered as first line therapy because of low mortality and power reception rate compared with over revascularization. In patients with acute mystic ischemia and extended mystic arteries, imaging follow up should be considered. In patients with acute mystic ischemia, secondary medical prevention, including smoking cessation, statin therapy, and antibiotic or anticoagulation treatment is recommended. Thank you very much for your attendance. The first uh, lecture for the mesotech ischemia and the second one will be chronic mesotech ischemia. Thank you.